Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Polish Dragon PI Show. I am your host, Steve Zimkowski, the author of the Polish Dragon PI book series, and I am here to share with you old radio shows from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s pertaining to the private detective genre, with the occasional spy thriller thrown in with a man called X, or maybe perhaps with the shadow nose. And this is episode 49. We are reaching episode 50. Do you want me to play something special? Maybe something that you are really into, like the adventures of Sam Spade, or maybe the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Perhaps you're a very Craig Confidential Investigator fan, or maybe Candy Matson, the private detective from San Francisco, or maybe only the shadow knows. So why don't you drop me a line, email me at zimco888 at gmail.com, or just leave a note in the comments down below. Either way, just let me know what you'd like to hear for the 50th episode. This week, we're going to share the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes, The Adventures of the Missing Bloodstains. So sit back and relax and take a journey back in time to when radio was the only form of home entertainment. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This rebroadcast is especially for the American Armed Forces and their allies. Now let's join Dr. Campbell as he enters Dr. Watson's study. Where on earth did I put it, oh, confound the thing? Watson, 
Huh? I forgot to bring my tobacco. Oh, relax, Holmes. Relax. <laughs> Forget about tobacco. Forget my arthur and relax. That's what we came in here for. Bubble, 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 bubble. I am relaxed, my dear fellow. I want to smoke. What about the bubble, bubble? Nothing like the peace and seclusion of a, of a Turkish bar. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Hello? Gusty, the steam room attendant. Seems to be painting you. Oh, my goodness. Now what? Has anyone seen Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Why, my dear friend. Oh, my dear friend. Oh, my dear friend. Oh, my dear friend. Oh, my dear friend. Here I am, Gus. Here I am. What do you want? Oh, come on. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It's good I find you. There has been an accident, Mr. Holmes. A bad accident. It's Lord Canterbury. He's in his dressing room, covered in blood. Oh. In that case, I fancy you want uh, Dr. Watson, do you? Not me. I'll be with you in a minute, Gus. Oh, no, not Dr. Watson. It's, it's too late for you. He's dead. Dead? Stabbed in six places. Good. Come and look at him, Mr. Holmes, please. Dead? Yeah, me. All right. I'll come at once. Oh, good gracious me. Uh, what's all the commotion? Why can't we have a little peace and part? Uh, right. Oh, right. Oh, oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, oh, what's going the meaning of this, Gus? Uh, why are these two persons talking uh, at the top of their voices? My dear Mr. Mr. Uh, well, whoever you are, I was never under the impression that the Olympia Files were a church. Furthermore, my dear Mr. Uh, oh, well, never mind the name. Tunbridge. Frederick Hubert Tunbridge, a liberal leader in the present parliament, and which everyone knows who keeps the breast of the time. My dear Mr. Tunbridge, I do not concern myself with trivialities. Furthermore, as I was saying before being so rudely interrupted, you may be interested to know that your hated rival, Lord Cantlebury, the conservative leader with whom you are known to have publicly locked forms on several occasions. Oh, oh what did I have? Oh, what's he done now, the old fool? If you mean Lord Cantlebury, he's done absolutely... Yes, he hasn't done anything, and probably never will again. Oh, what are you blithering about? Well, it seems that Gus has just discovered your, uh, shall we say, political vis-a-vis dead in his dressing room. Oh, you mean he's had a heart attack? No, I don't mean anything of the kind. He's been stabbed. In how many places did you say, Gus? In six places, Mr. Holmes. But that's impossible. I, uh, we, uh, that is, I uh, talked to him not half an hour ago. We had a little uh, conference, Tupper, as you understand. While he was waiting for Gus to come in and give him his patter. Oh, quite all right, but I left him. Oh, really? Are you sure? What do you mean? Of course I'm sure. Canterbury was alive and dressing like a trooper when I left him. I passed uh, Gus in the corridor and I came out of Canterbury's dressing room. Well, he'll tell you the old boy was alive and kicking. Oh, really? Yeah. How about it, Gus? Oh, it is true, I hear swearing, but from which dressing room it comes, I could not be sure. The walls are so thin, you understand. Yes, yes, indeed. It's quite true the dressing room walls are thin. And Gus, uh, who is this person, and why is he asking all these uh, stupid questions? Uh, but, uh, Mr. Turnbridge, this gentleman is Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective. Hmm, I've never heard of him. <laughs> not even me there. <laughs> well, well, send for Scotland Yard. This is a matter of national importance. Oh, quite. Yes, I think you're quite right. Uh, you may as well send for Inspector Lestrade, Gus. Scotland Yard will have to be informed in any case. In the meantime, however, well, I... I think I'll take a look. Well, in the meantime, Mr. Whoever you are, I insist that everything be left strictly alone. Very well, then, Mr. Uh, uh, Thingamabob, if you insist. But uh, you'll be losing valuable time. I most emphatically do insist. Well, I'm getting out of here. Me too, I'd like to come to the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can do without me, I'll be no just a moment, if you please. I think it's only fair to point out to you all that suspicion is bound to fall on anyone who leaves before the authorities have had a chance to search and question him. Watch me. Oh. You mean I have to be searched? We seem to have stirred up quite a hornet's nest, eh, Watson? Yes, and I brought you in here for a rest. <laughs> Nasty mess, eh, Mr. Holmes? Right from the back. Yes, not once, but six times. The ferocious thrusts. Quite unnecessarily brutal. And, uh, if I may say so, bloody. Yeah. Place looks like a charnel house. Yes, whoever did the deed must have been drenched in blood. Mm. Might tell your men to search for bloodstained towels or garments, will you, Stan? Yes. Well, I'll pick up anything that's got blood on it. Never you fear, Mr. Holmes. I've ordered a search of everybody and everything on the premises. Yes, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not going to be, uh, be very popular with, uh, with Mr. Tunbridge, eh, Holmes? Oh, I wouldn't care if he was the Archbishop of Canterbury. 
When Scotland Yard says search everybody, we search everybody. Besides, everybody knows he and the corpse here are bitter enemies. They fought like cat and dog. Um, how long would you say he'd been dead, Mr. Elms? Oh, I don't know. About, uh, let me say, uh, an hour and a half. Took 30, 40 minutes to get you here, Lestrade. Mm. And uh, Canterbury had been dead, let me see, over half an hour when Gus found him. Yes, uh, Gus. Did the, um, doorman notice who left the establishment during the half hour before the body was found? Uh, yes, sir. Only old Mr. Velford and, and his two sheep are near sighted to do a crime like this. Mm -hmm. Was the, um, door to Lord Canterbury's dressing room locked? Uh, no, sir. Huh? And how does it happen that he lay here for over half an hour before anyone found him? Particularly as he was down on the books for a massage half an hour before he was found. Uh, well, you see, I, I, I thought he was asleep, uh, Lord Canterbury. Sometimes he liked a little nap after he was in the steam room, and he didn't want I should disturb him. Oh, that's very interesting. Then you did come in this room once before you realized Lord Canterbury was there. Uh, yes, Mr. Holmes. But he was lying there so peaceful, so peaceful. Yes, on his back? Yes, sir, just like we found him. Uh, it wasn't until the second time I come in, I see he has his eyes open. And the place is, uh, so we say, all spattered with blood? It was so dark. The shades were drawn. It was not easy to see anything if you don't look close. Even then, some people are unable to observe the most obvious facts. Uh -huh. um, and what might you mean by that? Oh, just an observation of the strand, just a gratuitous observation. Uh, come in. Well, well Willis, what's up? We sliced the place from top to bottom, uh, just like you said, Inspector. And there's no blood stains nowhere, except on this. Uh, what's that? A pocket knife, sir. Large size. Oh. And it's been wiped off, but there's still some blood stains on the blind. Uh, we found it in the locker of a bloke, uh, Nine of Tunbridge. Uh huh. Just a minute, Mr. Strand. Don't go off the deep end. Well, it, yes, sir. You say there were no bloodstains anywhere except on this knife. Not a sign of a bloodstain nowhere. You searched the dirty linen hampers, the towels and lockers, for the customer of their clothes? Oh, yes, sir. We searched everything. There's not a sign of blood anywhere but on that there weapon. Amazing. That's yeah, enough for me. This here is the murder weapon, and it was found in Tumbridge's locker. Bring him in here, Willis, and we'll have him on the carpet. Yes, sir. Right away. I knew he was a murderer from the beginning. Who has the motive for killing Canterbury? This chap Tumbridge. Who has the opportunity? This chap Tumbridge. He admits himself he had a talk with the deceased and, and they had words. Where is this here bloodstained knife found? Nowhere but in the abyss, Mr. Tumbridge's locker. Hmm. Stupid place for a murderer to hide the fatal weapon in his own locker. Tumbridge isn't as stupid as that, must try. No, no. And why was it there? Uh, look here, this, this is an outrage, keeping me here like this. Well, don't you realize I had influence? Well, why at least let me put on my clothes instead of pawing them about? I'll complain to the authorities. I'll have you dismissed, all of you. Oh, maybe you will, sir. And then again, maybe you won't. Now, first of all, you'll answer some questions. Have you, uh, ever seen this knife before? Knife? Uh, knife? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it's mine. Uh, I've uh, had it all my life. I used to take it fishing when I was a boy. No, oh, indeed. I have to explain its size, then. Well, now I use it to open my letters. Oh, you do? Are you sure that's all you use it for? Yes, of course. So why are these here blood stains on it? Uh, blood stains? Yeah. Where? Here and here and here. Uh, oh, oh, no, don't you touch it. We don't want to destroy any possible fingerprints. But if it's mine, my fingerprints are already on it. Yes, he's right there, Stroud. Oh. Furthermore, that stain doesn't uh, doesn't look like blood to me. It's, it's not uh, red enough. It, it looks like rust. As a matter of fact, if a stain is a nice blood red, it's fairly certain it's not blood. Now, this particular stain... You mean this idea... particular stain to Scotland Yard, Mr. Uh, yes. Uh, don't forget, my dear Lestrade, I invented the first intelligible test for blood stains. That's quite true, Lestrade, he did. Yes, indeed. My test, uh, my test is infallible. It works on blood that is new or on blood that is old. I discovered the first reagent, which is precipitated by hemoglobin. Uh, 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 my sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry, but Scotland Yard hasn't any time for lectures. We believe in action. <clears throat> now, uh, Mr. Tumbrick, it's my uh, duty to take you into custody. And it's also my duty to warn you that anything that you may say may be used in evidence against you. Anything I say, uh, do you realize whom you're arresting? I'm a leading figure in British politics. So will this fellow who lies here stand with your knife, which has still got bloodstains on it. Lestrade, if you'll pardon me for saying so, in this case, it's not the bloodstains that are in evidence, but the bloodstains that are not in evidence. 
Oh, which is the significant factor. Uh, well, well, what do you mean by that? Well, simply that it would uh, have been rather difficult for Mr. Tumbridge to have committed a murder as gory as this one without having bloodstains on the towel he's wearing or on the uh, clothes which are still in his locker. Uh, what was to prevent him from dropping his towel outside Lord Canterbury's dressing room, going in and knifing him in the back, then sneaking down to the shower rooms, not more than 20 feet down the corridor, and washing away the evidence. Me going round about it in the, in the nude? Uh, certainly oh, not. Most certainly not, sir. Remember, my dear Lestrade, as you drag one of Britain's leaders away to jail, that it might have been possible for him to stab his enemy in a fit of temper, but he would never have dreamed of running up and down the corridors in his birthday suit. Oh, let me see. I'm afraid I shouldn't have to look for another explanation of the missing bloodstains. Holmes, it's uh, late. Everyone else has left the Turkish bar. Mm, everyone but the faithful Gus. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> Tonight we have by my house sauerkraut. I don't like sauerkraut. Hey, besides, I've got to stay and walk up. Then you'll have to wait till we find the bloodstains. Uh, here somewhere. That's why I sent home for my famous benzidine peroxide mixture. Somewhere on the premises, there is a towel or linen or something that has bloodstains. Oh, but we've been through the towels and the linen a dozen times, Holmes. No sign of blood. Furthermore, according to establishment's checklist, there are no towels or any linen missing. Even grass. Which he, 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 which he washes himself. Is, is hung here on the, on the line? You don't wash any linen but your own, do you, Gus? Uh, no, Mr. Holmes. Everything go out to the laundry. Mm. I, I wash my own because I'd like to be fresh and clean. Twice a day I wash, noon and evening. Mm. Yes. The evening's job hasn't been done yet, eh? Uh, no. Uh, this one, I, I wash this noon. It's my towel from this morning. Oh, yes, yes. This morning's towel washed this noon. Yes. But what is it? Canterbury was murdered in the middle of the afternoon about 3.30. Now it's now after 7 o'clock. Don't you see, Watson? This towel. Don't you see? No, uh -huh. I don't. Let's see, that's the thing. The towel's as clean as a whistle. but not dry. If it had been watched at noon, washed at noon, it would be dry now. But it's still damp. Yes, it was washed after Canterbury's death. Of course. To move the blood stains. Yes, Mr. Holmes. That's why you didn't report the death until half an hour after Canterbury had died. Oh, no. Don't have time to remove the blood stains. But that's not true. Besides, you can't prove anything. The towel is clean now. There are no marks, no stains. But the fact that there were no stains on his cousin first made me suspect you. Lord Canterbury was found lying on his back. And yet, when you uh, informed us that he had been stabbed, you were quite definite about the number of times that he'd been stabbed. But in the back, yes. Yes, how did you know that, Gus? Well, I, I lift him up I, I, and I look. Of course, I see what you're getting at home. He couldn't have done that. No one could examine the corpse without getting blood all over himself. And yet, when Gus appeared to tell us of Canterbury's death, there wasn't a spot of blood on him. But if I can prove that this towel, which you so carefully washed, once had blood stains, and that you were very careful to remove those stains... That you will never prove. I have scrubbed, I have, I have used soap, I have even boiled that towel. There is not even a suspicion of a blood stain left. That is why you're wrong, my friend. And what's in the of water into this tub, will you? No matter how thoroughly you try to remove a blood stain, it will never... Out. Damn this spot. Yes, we only need enough moisture in the cloth. Now I'll drop a few drops of my famous solution onto the cloth. There we are. Uh, well, all I can see is on a fair blue streak. Yes. Yes, it's undoubtedly blood. Blood? Yes, the theory of blue streaks prove infallibly that there was blood on the towel. And now, Gus, how are you going to explain why you were so anxious to remove these blood stains? Oh, no. No, no, I, I, I did not do it. It was Mr. Turnbridge. He did it. The knife, watch his knife. There was blood on it. The... Let me out of here. It's not my fault. I don't want to hurry. Come, come, she's running away. Watson, we can't get him to chase. Well, there he goes down the corridor. He's gone into the steamboat. Don't worry, I'll get him. Phew. The steam's thick in here. I can hardly see my hand before my face. He must be in here. Look under the benches, Watson. Watson, keep the door open. Let's come this last steam out of here, will you? I, I didn't shut the door. Oh, did you hear that? The door. Someone's locked the door. Hey, come in. Let us out. Let us out, you hear? They're locked in. You've been locked in by mistake. No, you're wrong. It was no mistake, my friend. Oh, my God. He's 
Yeah, just keep up with us. You know that special voice through the ventilator. So you were behind this murder too, Professor. Of course. Perhaps you would like to know why I had to kill Lord Kenton. Yes, indeed. That would be very interesting. Good. I found it necessary to start a feud between the two great political parties because they're in danger of forming a coalition. To pass certain housing reforms that would have proved very expensive to me. Well, what better way to break up an incipient collaboration than by killing one leader, having the other hanged for his murder? A very ingenious body of you. Pity you should have chosen such a clumsy tool of just. Clumsy. <laughs> but he fooled Scotland Yard, Mr. Holmes. It was just my ill luck that you should be on the premises when the accident occurred. Oh, thank you for the compliment. No, of course. However, it's a mistake which I'm sure Gus will be able to rectify. Gus? Oh, very simple. I have sent him to put more coals on the fire. Any moment now, there should be more steam. Yes, gentlemen, much more steam. I'm afraid that when you finish with this steam bath, you will never need enough. No. You will be boiled alive. He's right there. There comes the steam pouring out of the opening over our head. Only if we could reach that opening, get stuck some of these towers into the pipeline and cut off the flow. The blow flow is getting very hot in here. Wait, I had it. One of the long benches. I'll stand on the end. We'll have to balance it while I climb on the top. Talk box and make a noise. Anything to cover up the moving of the bench. Very well. Oh, it's getting hot. My out here. This has gone far enough. We, we can't stand much more of this. Pity, Holmes. I'll have the other tower, quick. My out here. Turn the steam off. You hear, Mariachi, can't you hear? The heat, it's, it's becoming unbearable. Yes, more towels, Holmes. Is it getting hot enough in there, gentlemen, for you? I'm sure it is. <laughs> boiled nice and pink, boiled in steam, live steam. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Uh, now we'll have... You can't stand up there all night, Holmes. Come on, I have to. That's a terrific, huh? Then it lucky for... The soon become so great that it may burst the boiler. That's dangerous. Buildings have been known to collapse because of bursting boilers. Nevertheless, it's our one chance. As long as we can find it quite at first. Before my arm is snapped into... Holmes, well, your arm isn't as strong as the boiler plate. Pressure. Pressure, my dear Watson. Uh, measured per square foot of air surface. Quite a bit of service to a boiler. Uh, the opening of this pipe is very small. All the same, I'm afraid. I I can't hold out much longer, Watson. Hold on, Holmes. Hold on. It must burst soon. It must. The pressure. Ah, my hand. My hand. through the explosion all right, Dr. Watson? Well, I had a nasty crack where Holmes and the bench fell on me, and Holmes had the wind knocked out of him, but we were, we were in fairly good shape by the time the fire brigade pulled us out from the wreckage. Moriarty wasn't by any chance uh, trapped or killed or something. Unfortunately, no, but they found Gus, however, quite dead. I suppose the exploding boiler did for him. No, there was a bullet wound in the back of his head. I rather imagine that Moriarty wanted to make sure that he would never appear in court. Doctor, if I had to go through what you went through in that Turkish bath episode, I think I'd never want to work on another case with Holmes again. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Campbell. I, uh, I certainly did feel like that for a couple of hours. But by the time we got back to Baker Street and sat down to one of Mrs. Hudson's good meals, well, I was ready for anything that Holmes had in mind. You know, there's nothing like a good dinner to make you feel a new man. <laughs> And that ends another episode of the Polish Dragon P.I. Show. You were listening to the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes in the adventures of the missing blood stains. And remember, if you are interested in just letting me know what you would like to hear for episode 50, drop me a line at zimco888 at gmail.com or drop a note in the comments below. And if you are interested in any of the Polish Dragon P.I. books, they are available at www. Dot polishdragon.com or at Amazon Kindle for just 99 cents. So talk to you next time. Bye-bye.